Hello and welcome to Call of the Week. In this show, I open a brand new Keyforge deck. I play a few games and then I decide whether I keep the deck or not. I only get to keep two out of every 12, so the decision can sometimes be a little challenging. Today I will be looking at Ji who pressingly automates technology. Another coda, Brobnar shadows and untamed. Brobnar looking like it's trying to control the board here with a coward's end and a couple of other effects. There's some fighting to be done. A couple of bigger creatures. Earthshaker gonna take care of all those low power creatures for you. There is a war song, but I feel like not enough creatures to make it work super effectively. Blood of the Titans, always good on a crump if you can get it there. Get some extra value out of that crump. War Drummer helps give all of your creatures a little bit more effectiveness. Give them a second shot. Poison Wave got a lot of direct damage, a little bit of stealing. Master Plan's always great, get that inner house play. I'm not sure if there's anything that's gonna combo with it really well. Oh, maybe the save the pack over here. You got a poison wave or pawn sacrifice and then save, follow it up with save the pack. Save the pack and coward's end, always an interesting combo. You can get a bunch of chains and wipe out everything that is damaged and everything that is not damaged. Evasion sigil, now that's interesting. When you use evasion sigil, it kind of discourages fighting. So that could be a bit tough with the Brobnar. You might not want to play Evasion Sigil here. Speed Sigil. Now that is going to work really well with the Brobnar because they can come down and they can immediately fight. Also works really well with Witch of the Eye. Uh, that could that could be really great because usually you don't get to use Witch of the Eye, but if you have Speed Sigil down, that's pretty much a guaranteed use. Carlo, decent with the number of artifacts in here. A little bit of extra stealing. Small, some of the smaller Shadows creatures. Double Nepenthe Seed. Double Nepenthe Seed is really, really good if you have some high value cards you want to bring back. There's a lot of creatures here. I really wish, especially with the um, Nepenthe Seed, I really wish there was a full moon. You know, you could see playing a full moon, immediately bringing it back with the Nepenthe Seed, and then just playing out a ton of creatures. Then it would also really want a key cheat. But I have neither of those here. Gotta take what you can get. Mermook, gonna help out a little bit with getting your opponent off check. So I feel like the basic idea here is to provide a decent amount of board control with your Brobnar. Obviously you got some stealing uh, with Shadows and then you just want to burst up with Untamed. Which is very, very typical coda for those three houses. Really wish it had a key cheat. That would make things a lot more interesting in Untamed. Master Plane could be interesting. Not exactly sure where it's going to go. Seems like it could be a pretty interesting deck to play. We'll see what happens in the first game. I will be back for the third and final game. Alright, I am back ready for the third final game with this deck. Wow, I have just been blown away by the lines on this deck. Very interesting gameplay. Double Nepenthe, Double Witch of the Eye makes for a lot of really challenging and interesting decisions. Definitely want to play the speed sigil here I found. Helps a lot with getting value out of those witches of the eye. You don't have a whole lot to protect them with. No shadow self, no taunters. Your best bet at protecting the witch of the eye is to fight everything else down with your Brobnar so that they can't be taken care of as easily. But even better, if you have the speed sigil down, you just get that reap off as soon as you play it. So really interesting lines on there. You can get the Dust Pixie back, you can get the Flaxia back, you can get the Save the Pack back. You can get Mermook back even. Keep your opponent off check for a turn if that's what you need to do at the moment. Double Nepenthe Seed helps out a lot too. Uh, Master Plan comes back, that's great. Coward's End can come back, get some extra use out of that board control. Earthshaker can come back for the same reason. Warsong could come back. Not too many fights available here in Brobnar, but 
it's just another option that you've got. So, let's see if Xi, who pressingly automates technology, is going to be worth keeping. Or if I will call the week. Take a look at my opponent, Siaka's decklist here. Triple information exchange with double wild wormhole. Lots of potential for some amber generation here. Crucially, I'm going to want to look at whether I will play the evasion sigil or not. Evasion sigil seems to be um, a bit wonky in this deck. If my opponent wants to fight a lot, then I definitely want to play it. If my opponent has a bunch of smaller creatures, then maybe I don't want to play it because I can kind of take care of them with the um, pinging damage and the Earthshaker. Not a ton of creatures and logos here, just a few, and they're all under three power, so that doesn't make me want to play Evasion Sigil. Gonna need to look out for his flow on logos. Dinos. He's got his own board wipe. He's got some bigger dinos in there for sure. Oh, and a Primus. So Primus uh, is the card where for every Amber on Primus, friendly creatures gain additional power. I believe it's two for every Amber on Primus. So I don't think I want to fight into his stuff. So maybe I do play it here and just reap out with my Brobnar board when I've got my big Brobnar board. Because he probably wants to try to fight down some of my creatures with his Saurians. Gonna need to look out for the double Odoak. Of course, the problem with playing the Evasion Sigil with my deck is that all of my Shadows creatures tend to have fight abilities. I've got the Fighting Stealing Shadows, so I may not want to play it anyways, because if the fight doesn't resolve, then I don't get to steal. Star Alliance, got a red alert. That could be a problem, I do have a lot of creatures. Explorer Rover, double Kirkar, what's going to hide behind Kirkar? Quinn Can, couple of blasters in there as well. Alright, let's go ahead and start the game. Uh, I think I will keep this. Yeah, four untamed things. Sure, why not? Three creatures and and something that stuns. Yeah, sounds good. The pent seed coming down for later. I don't think he has any artifact control in here, so I should be okay. Siaka has started with a logos turn. Classic logos opener. Wormhole. Rover comes out. Love it. Gives me something to stun with my Inca. That's great. Get the double pip off the dust pixie. And I've drawn in two for Brobnar cards. I love having Blood of the Titans together with the Crump and the Banner of Battle. That's going to give me a lot of potential to do some serious Amber control in Brobnar. Yeah, I think Evasion Sigil is probably going to be a no go. There's just too many fight abilities in this deck to make it a smart choice to play. Regenerable Meteor coming down for Siaka, so I don't have to worry about that killing off my big Bromnar dudes. Double Odoak. Okay, I'm happy to see that now because I've got all this Bromnar in hand, so I'll be able to kill his Odoaks before I need to do some stealing. So we're going Bromnar for sure. Crump. With the Blood of the Titans on there. Beautiful. Banner of Battle giving everything. Bonus Amber. I think I'm going to use this punch to get rid of the ward so that later I'll be able to take out that Odoak. Just remove that barrier from killing it. Drawn into some shadows. Not what I want right now. I do have a coward's end. That may be the way I end up going here. Just reap with the crump and then coward's end everything. 
or depending on how much amber he has, maybe fight the rover with the crump. Actually, that would probably be better, because then my crump will be damaged and I won't lose it. I also might take another untamed turn so I can reap out with my board. The witch coming down is just going to end up dying later, but I can get the Nepenthe down. We'll see if he kills off some of my stuff. Pulpate coming down. Another creature for me to blow up with Coward's End, so... Light of the Archons on the Legionary, and he's unstunning. He now has more creatures than me. It's a tough call. Um, wipe the board now, or go up to five Amber, and then go Brobnar in the next turn. Not very likely to draw more Brobnar if I go Untamed now, because there's a lot of Brobnar out already. Also not very likely to draw more Untamed, so I'll probably most likely to get Shadows, which can set up my following turn after Brobnar. He's not too close to check right now, so I'm not too worried about having to steal, and if I need to, I can at least get him down one with the Crump. Which probably is, again, the smart choice anyways. I think I go untamed. Get the reaping done. Put the witch down, that's a threat on the board for him next turn, so he has to kind of deal with it. And I can stun something with the Inca. Ooh, forgot that the pull paint was going to make me destroy my own Nepenthe. Oof, that hurt. That happens. There's a lot of effects going on. Hard to keep track of everything. Alright, reaping here, dealing two damage. Oh, what do I damage? Let's, um... What if I put on the Legionary? Because if I put it on myself... It kind of gives away the game here. Unless he thinks I'm trying to metagame him. Let's put it on the witch. See what happens. Maybe he'll know what I'm up to. Maybe he'll think I'm trying to trick him. It's hard to say. Messes with him either way. So, that's something. Drew into another Brobnar card. That's great. So I can fight once with the Crump. To keep it alive, make my opponent lose one. Play the Coward's End, wipe everything except for my two damaged creatures, and then Anger to ready and reap with the Crump again, unless he still has a creature on the board. We'll see. We'll see what he does. He may decide that because I damaged my own creature, he may decide to damage his creatures up so they don't die. We'll see what happens here. Going Saurian, putting the sco Scotum down on his Legionary, Oduak on Stunning. That is one tough Legionary, five armor. Five armor and seven power on that Legionary. Killing off my Inca with a Failing Strike, interesting. That makes me think that he... okay, and he's killing off my long shot, so maybe he doesn't see this coming. Yeah, and he's killing the witch, and he's reaping with the Oduak, so I don't think he sees this coming. That's fine with me. Yeah, I'm in a very good position here. So Crump can fight the rover, get damaged, Blow up everything with Coward's End, Anger, so I can get another Reap in there. I'll be in check, I'll take my opponent off check, and Crump will be alive. I could recur the punch here, but that's not what I'm... That's not worthy of the dependency of use. Yeah. 
destroyed my banner of battle by choosing Brobnar. That's okay. That's okay. Okay, I've damaged my crump, made him lose one. Blow up the board. All the way up to nine amber here. And I've drawn into a hand of shadows. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want to see right now. Relentless Whispers plus Silvertooth. Gonna be a huge amber generation on my next turn. If my opponent doesn't take a bunch of my amber, which he might with uh, information exchange, he's going Logos. I could have a big burst of amber on my next turn. Including some stealing. Okay, he stole one with one information exchange, played down his bibliophile and his Igor, also played a wormhole, what did wormhole get him? Wormhole got him the information exchange, okay. Alright, so I'm going to forge my first key here. My opponent is up to eight, can I stop him from forging? I don't think so. Oh, maybe with the Nepenthe seed. Uh, so, if I Relentless Whispers, his eye gore, Ooh, this is tricky because I've got the Palm Sacrifice and Relentless Whispers. Uh, okay, so if I play down the Speed Sigil, that's one. Relentless Whispers, I, if I can play it twice, no, I get him down to six. I still can't steal enough to get him off check. But I can get myself into check. I have three pips in hand, and I can steal one with Relentless Whispers. I even could do it again to get up to eight Amber, which might be the right call here. I'm just trying to parse out how... The, the, the optimal path here for using Pawn Sacrifice and Relentless Whispers. I don't want it because I don't want to damage my own crump. I don't know if there's a way to do it. I, I, I don't think there's any way around it. I think I have to damage crump, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. So that's what we're going to do. Speed Sigil comes down. Not the best timing to put the Speed Sigil down, but that's okay. Um, Relentless Whispers, gonna kill that off. Bye bye Bibliophile, they're both gonna die anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Nepenthe Seed gets Relentless Whispers back. Play it again. Get rid of the Igor. Silver Tooth. Comes down, he's ready. Reap, pawn sacrifice. Damage my own crump, unfortunately. Back up to nine amber again. That's pretty worth it. Pretty worth it. Um, I mean, I could have just tossed the pawn sacrifice, but I think I'm ahead. I want to keep rushing. He's putting down a Molina with a blaster on it, doing three damage to my Crump, getting it off the board. He's got a Kirkar. All right, so I get to forge again. So I can put down these two Shadows creatures, reap with one, steal with the Urchin. That gets me to five. Brobnar's not viable. This is... Untamed is not great, so I think that's probably the right call. Shadows is the way to go. We'll see what happens to the board state here on the next turn. I would really like to be able to play these these two Flaxies for value, but we'll see what happens. In a really good position right now. Okay, well... You know, and then that happens. Your opponent plays an information exchange. Entropic Swirl, getting him another one. Igor coming down. 
able to reap because of the speed sigil. I'm assuming he's going to reap. He didn't pick up any logos, or not at least not any that he wanted to keep. No, I didn't pick up any logos, so I don't know what he kept there. My opponent is in check once again. I think the move here is untamed. I can make one of these Flaxias viable. Keep my opponent off check for another turn with the Mermook. Get a reap in, put myself into check. That's the way to go. Mermook comes down. Two Flaxias. And reap. Okay. I've drawn into a handful of pips with shadows. Uh, again, Evasion Sigil is not really something that I want, but at this point in the game, I might just play it for the pip. Honestly. We'll see what he does. He's playing his hand out, so I think he has a path to keep me off check. Stealth mode came down. No actions on my next turn. That's annoying, because I can't play the Poison Wave if I go Shadows. That makes me want to go Untamed and Reap. It's killing off the Mermook. Still hasn't gotten me off check. And I won! He was just playing it out for fun, looks like. Uh, wow, I'm impressed. I Siaka is a very quality player and I told him to bring a, a, a bit of a higher tier deck here. So I am really surprised at how well that went, how well that went for me. Um, good rollout on the deck, definitely. Things came at the right time. I, I, I was able to very effectively use the Coward's End to my advantage. Definitely worked out. The Nepenthe Seed was really good. I trashed one accidentally, but... Um, Double Relentless Whispers, I mean, that's four amber, if you can get value out of it. I consistently kept my opponent off check and was able to keep stay up in amber count and just kept pushing it, so bought me the game. You know, the last two decks have been really fun that I've played, um, and somewhat lacking in power. This deck is really interesting lots of interesting lines and it feels just super powerful it's definitely a deck that i think even after playing three games with it i feel like okay i don't know everything about this deck there's more to discover there's more for me to learn about this deck and like when do i play the evasion sigil i definitely haven't figured that out is it ever played is it just a dead card in this deck um, what do I bring back with the Witches? What do I bring back with the Nepenthe? Uh, lots of interesting lines here. Really fun deck. I think for once, I am not going to call the week. I am going to add this deck to my collection for the first time on Call the Week. I found a deck I'm keeping. I'm very excited about that. She who pressingly automates technology. Welcome to the team, G. Welcome to team Brobnar89. That has been me. Yes, indeed, Brobnar89. This has been Call of the Week. Thank you for watching the first episode where I found a deck that I am keeping. Thanks once again to Siaka for the excellent game. And I hope to see you next time on Call of the Week.